some days are a joy and they're really like easy breezy and other days they can be a little harder if you're processing some personal trauma. But what I really found during that that was essential for me was a lot of needed encouragement through the Zoom calls, through the support, through you guys reaching out. It was always at just the right time. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to the show. So this episode is all about overcoming obstacles with hope. And my guest is Mackenzie Nelson, one of my co-authors from Step Into Your Brilliant Purpose. And so again, this is, Lindsay's all about overcoming obstacles with hope. Her book will be coming out, but we're gonna lean into her story first and then lean into her book that comes out in September. Mackenzie, welcome to the show. <laughs> oh my goodness, how are you? Okay. Thank you for having me. So what's what's the power of hope in your life? For me, the power of hope is the power of perseverance, which for me is, you know, that inner voice, whether you refer to that as God or just that small voice guiding you through life that enables me to stand back up after I've fallen down. And then I feel stronger for it. And that that really is my hope in knowing that regardless of circumstances, that when I'm able to see them from a higher space and a higher perspective with hope. I'm able to lean into that and learn from the times where I do fall down or fall short or make mistakes or, you know, just something doesn't go as you expect it. Get back up again, try again, keep going. <laughs> and just through persevering and pursuing that, um, it's led me to here. So, uh, you're welcome. We're glad you're here. So, so hope, what are you saying like the external energy of the universe is there to support you and, and yes. move forward? Or is that what hope, it, that's your definition of hope? Definitely. I do believe that my hope is, is not in myself alone, but in the ability to believe in that higher power that although I may fall short, there is always hope because ultimately it's not me who controls my destiny. Okay, now that that's again, we will everything. And once we fully stand in that responsibility and allow why we're here in that connection of the universe, right? And, and our purpose, yes. our yes. unique purpose, that's, that's where all the answers come from. Definitely, when you're willing to move past fear and embrace hope and embrace the higher pursuits of life, which I believe are, you know, we find strength in in walking in what our purpose is and walking in our destiny. And then it's only when we're on that path that we can enable others to come to that higher place, higher self. Okay. So let's get into one of two things because you're already an international bestseller. Our book did, it landed with the world. So what, what was your topic about? And then, then where, and then within that, where did that lead you next? <laughs> So my chapter was titled In Step Into Your Brilliant Purpose, Forgiveness is for You. And I have a different biological father than the one who raised me. And the way it was communicated to me was not in a very positive manner. I was kind of raised in a household where there was a silent culture. I mean, there was a lot of noise because there I was one of three, but we never talked about, you know, the deeper things in life. So we never really discussed the fact that, you know, I had a different biological father and I never processed that. I never really realized how much that played into my identity. And I came to a certain point in life where I had realized I had held a lot of resentment against the man who had left me before I was born. And that through an exercise I was introduced to at church, I decided to forgive him and it changed everything for me. I lost 75 pounds. Literally, I was a lighter, happier person. And it was really a turning point in my life where I started to understand more about the power of forgiving those who have hurt you. The, I agree with everything you're saying there. And when it comes to forgiveness, it's a dual gift. It's something that you give to allow you to move forward right to give that's right forgiveness. 
But the other piece I think that often comes later and which is the second part of that gift is forgiving oneself. That's right. You have to forgive, you know, yourself first to be able to forgive others. And it really does just like, like we were talking about, it's, it's excess, right? So when you forgive someone else, it enables you to fly higher in essence, because that forgiveness can really drag you down in areas that you don't even realize you're being dragged down in until you're not anymore. <laughs> it opens up space. It, it does. Space up. It does. Okay. I, I think, I think that, that, that is so important as we move forward. And one of the things that, so if you could share with someone, again, we're in a place where people are very divided, very staunch on their opinions and holding on to that, that righteousness. And, and it's, it's, it's holding them back. It's allowing, it's not allowing them to move forward. What would you say to them that to just open that space and, and allow forgiveness to flow? I would tell them that, you know, we're not so different after all. <laughs> we have more in common, I think, than we do, you know, apart from one. There's so much that can unite us. We may see the world a little differently or have different definitions for how we see certain aspects of life. But when love is the focal point and you have a heart that is truly full of love, you see everything differently when you're looking to love someone instead of looking to disagree or, or you're looking to agree with someone. And when they disagree with you, that's a lot of times when that conflict comes in, when I don't think disagreements are necessarily a bad thing. I think actually we should have more disagreements where we are kind and in love and we can have conversations and that can enable us, you know, to come away with some newfound wisdom because all of our walks and our journeys are so unique. I sincerely believe that there is so much wisdom in each one of our stories. That's why I think it's so important due to the current social climate that people step up and I'm hoping to encourage others to follow in my path and write their story so that we can learn from them and we can learn their knowledge and we can, you know, other people can feel love and they can feel that they are not alone and maybe I'm not so weird after all <laughs> no, well there's anything but weird about you my friend um, <laughs> and, and then you're also saying that that piece of connection that within standing in your uniqueness we we can all connect in in the yeah. value that we bring forward a hundred percent I think that we are all connect. And I think that that's what makes relationships so valuable, so important and, and so fruitful, really. When you invest in another person and you're willing to be open with your heart, I think there's a lot of fear in that for people because we've all been rejected at times, but through a series of, you know, I was in sales for many years and I, I got rejected over and over and over. But what I really learned was when I got accepted, wow, that felt amazing. But I never would have had that feeling had I not, you know, gone through the rejections to get there. So, you know, moving into this role as a writer and an author, I feel like I'm taking a lot of those aspects with me and just, you know, open to connections and meeting people. And I believe, you know, who's going to journey with you, who's meant to will. And, and that's amazing. And I focus there on the people that are with me, you know, don't focus on the ones that aren't find, you know, value in the people that are willing to stand with you. And, and again, that I, I'm grateful for you because of the book that we brought forward, where we now get to stand in this. So, so since your chapter, what else have you been working on? <laughs> Well, technically, while I, I got invited to be in the book by Rebecca, which was amazing. I wasn't expecting to be a part of the anthology, but I leaned in and decided, you know, yes, I was hearing this is for you. And I, I believe now in hindsight, a lot of the connections that we made working on the anthology together are really serving me now stepping forward into this new project, um, which is my book coming out titled My Father's Feathers. And the subtitle is A Journey of Transformation and Healing, One Feather at a Time. I've been working on that for the past few years, and it is my life story, my journey. You get to follow me from practically six years old to present day. <laughs> so there was a lot of writing that didn't make the book. So I'm, I'm thinking that 
there may be some more coming. <laughs> so let's back this up a little bit. First of all, you have the feathers on your shirt and it's yes. a symbolism, right? Yes. So, so the, 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 the symbol of the feather and, and you're, are you referring to your birth father and, and lean into what you mean by that and the title? So the title for me, feathers have really been speaking to me for about the past five or six years. There is a particular picture of a feather that is currently on my wall in the living room and I faced many medical battles. I almost lost my life after I had my little girl five years ago and I would look at this picture of a feather. And it just called to me, nothing special about it. I think I picked it up at Hobby Lobby, but I <laughs> could just feel every time I looked at this feather, you know, I would think about and wonder about like my biological connections, like where are they? And somehow I felt connected to this feather. And then it, at, as time went on, I was feeling more of a pull for all of my family as a whole, like my dad's side, my biological side, my mother's side. And this was before I even started writing. And I heard while I was looking at this feather, the feathers will bring you together. <laughs> and every time I looked at this feather, I kept hearing the feathers will bring you together, not knowing what it meant. And so fast forward to today, that feather that I looked at is actually on the cover of the book. They worked it in to the cover. So it really does feel full circle to me. And my father's feathers, it refers to, you know, God, or it can be the higher power or the universe refers to, you know, my biological father, my father now, all of my family, and just kind of like my father's feathers is that place where we're covered under his wings, you know, covered in the feathers, covered in love, covered in unity. And, and protection and, and yes. Mm. Safety. Okay. Right now and so that, the feather is just like indicative of, for me, is like indicative of transformation. And, and you know what I think is interesting about that, that what you said, and I suddenly saw that, right? The protective wings is that they're a feather and, and it does. It like shields birds from the rain and, and it insulates them and cools them off, all of that within, allows them to fly stabilizes yes. them and yet yes. it's very delicate yes yes and it is it's very delicate and light and it also indicates you know a higher perspective because you can have wings and fly and be able to see your circumstances from a higher place where you are noticing the silver linings and taking in people who are there for you even though others that you want to be there are not but you can find solace, comfort, and safety under those wings. And they lift you up. That's right. It's a brilliant analogy and, and visual. And all right, now, now I see that. I see that. And then each, each of those, the collective, allows a bird to fly. That's right. And it also indicates... In, in my journey, the very areas where I felt my wings were clipped, where I couldn't soar, where I was destroyed, saddened, those are the same areas I feel that have been utilized to help me soar. And that, that blew my mind, you know? <laughs> so, okay, let's, let's go into the, this is for people who are out there that are, say, I have a book in me and I, I run into a lot of people that do. The, the process of, of the anthology, writing the one chapter, and then leaning in as you were writing the book that you, 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 it's been in you, how did one allow the other to flow the process, and, and what finally made you go from all those years of working on it to now it's coming out in September? <laughs> That's a great question, Maureen. You are such a good interviewer, I have to say. Well, okay, so you, you just landed that the, and I tell this to people behind the scenes, but when I know that I reach that, that bell or that goal, it's when I hear that, oh, that's a great question. No one has ever asked me. Yes, yes. I did. So that's tell amazing. us about that. <laughs> great question. So really what started my process was I had an encounter, and this is in the book, a spiritual encounter, and that really jump-started this whole process. Following the encounter, 
I heard clear as day, write three pages a day. You are a writer. And I was like, no, I'm not. I've never written anything. You know, I went like this. I did this for a month and I heard it every day. You're a writer. You're a writer. Until finally I was like, okay, I'll start. You know, I said, I keep hearing this. I must, you know, I need to start writing three pages a day. And at that time I thought, I was like, what am I writing about? I didn't know my own story. I, I didn't even know my own story. And so as I progressed and I was writing the three pages a day, I noticed as time went on, I could look back and see these insights and I could see patterns and I could see ways I was living my life that I could fine tune a little better. I could see where I could work different things out a different way because I'm like, why am I doing it that way? I could do it this way. And as I continued on my journey, my writing got better and better at first. My writing then versus now, it's like maybe two different people wrote. <laughs> as I kept writing and was faithful to that process, my writing improved dramatically. And I just see now looking back the implications for other people who want to write their own stories or who just want to know what their story is. Three pages a day just has so many applications to so many people's lives. And honestly, you don't even have to be looking to, you know, write a story. You can just do this to heal. You don't have to take that next step to publish your work if that's too scary, or you can pray into that or lean into it. However you decipher, you know, you make a decision. But for me, I really was led. And it's a funny story. I didn't know, I, I did not know anyone. You know, I, I've never done media work. I've never, this is, I'm very new in this space, but I kept hearing, I will connect you with the right people when the time comes. And so when that time came, I, I knew it. And my husband had a mutual friend who'd had a book published with Rebecca. And he's like, you know, let's just, that's so funny. That is so, fun. look who's calling me right now. You see it? Oh, we're going to show her this later. <laughs> this is how everything has been going in my life. Like, it is that hilarious? Like, I say her name and she calls me. <laughs> we so, will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so basically, just through that one connection, I link up with her. I know nothing about RHG Media, not about the stories, that, nothing. I just hear, this is who I want to publish your book and work with her. So it was a one-stop, talk to her, done deal. And as I'm realizing, we signed the contract, as I'm realizing what she does and what RHGTV media is all about, I'm blown away. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like people like me. How did this happen? <laughs> Just then, you know, one step after another. And now I work for RHGTV with you and with her. And it just goes to show that when you lean in and you're faithful to say yes and honor that, you don't know where you're going to go, but you will be met with love. Well, I'm going to give you feedback here on something that you get to receive is that the, the peace, and this goes from being in hope, right, and in and, 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 and those higher energies is that you, you surrendered and you're open, your willingness and openness has allowed all these opportunities to come. And that takes a tremendous amount of courage and vulnerability. And that's also where, where the magic happens when people connect. So do you get to receive that as, as your, your bravery and courage and standing in that, it's just saying yes. Thank you so much. You're gonna make me cry. <laughs> Thank you. That, that means so much coming from you. You are such a bright, shining light of leadership on the anthology. And, you know, there are days that writing, you know, you write, you know how it goes. Some days are a joy and they're really like easy breezy. And other days they can be a little harder if you're processing some personal trauma. But what I really found during that, that was essential for me was a lot of needed encouragement through the Zoom calls, through the support, through you guys reaching out. It was always at just the right time, you know, where I needed that little something extra and I'd get off those calls with you guys and I'd be like, yes, you know, it was like a, a new, like refreshing breeze had blown through my life and I suddenly had more energy. And, and, you know, it is having people around you that see you 
and that see who you are and that speak that into you, that is very powerful. And so thank you so much for, you've really impacted my life in a lot of ways. So I, I can't thank you enough for, for seeing me. And I just know, I mean, I can't wait to see where all of this continues to go. It's already enough, but <laughs> You're just getting started, my friend. I want to receive that you were so welcome. I'm so grateful that you said yes to be on the journey with the book. And now your book is being brought forward. So where can we? It's it's myfathersfeathers.com, right? That's the website. That's right. Yes. And and the book's coming out. We'll be doing a whole bunch of promos. So just keep looking for it. Mackenzie Nelson, My Father's Feathers, the name of the book. It's the website. The links will be here. And I can't wait. But thank you. Thank you for standing in hope. Thank you for standing for others to move forward with hope. And, and thank you for just being you and bringing your unique, uniqueness and voice that it's really, truly a gift and one feather at a time. Okay, everyone, have a great week. Any last words, my friend? Just God bless. And hey, if I can be of any service to you, you can go to my website. I'm also available at mckenzieknelson.com. And I do have an opportunity there. You can connect with me. If anything I said hit home to you, I'll speak to you for a half hour, no charge. So I encourage you, take that step, reach out, connect. You never know what might happen next. All happens with connection, right? It does. Bye, everyone. See you soon again. Mackenzie Nelson, myfathersfeathers.com. And do, do me, we're going to have the link to the other website. Reach out. That's the first step. That's the first step you get to take. Just say Bye, yes. <laughs> say yes. The power of yes. Bye, everyone.